Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully resolve if you're coming across an issue with Adobe Premiere Pro has stopped working on your computer. So this should hopefully be a pretty straightforward tutorial and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you want to open up a web browser and I'm going to have three different links in the description video. I want you guys to do them all in order. So the first link kind of stands by itself here. It's just from a Microsoft domain to download the Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2015. You want to go ahead and select the download button on this page. And then you want to select either the 64-bit version for the 64-bit operating systems or the Times 86 version for 32-bit operating systems. And once you've made your selection, you want to go just slot to here and then select next to begin the download process. We'll take a couple moments to download. It's only about 13 or 14 megabytes, so it's not very big. And once it's done downloading to your computer, you just want to run the file. So I'm going to minimize my web browser here. And I'm going to click on Run to open the file. Once you're looking through the end user license terms, you want to check mark the box where you agree to license terms and conditions. And then select Install. If you receive a user account control prompt, you want to left click on Yes. Should say setup successful. So at this point, I'd suggest restarting your computer and hopefully that has resolved the problem. If not, we're going to move on to the next two links I'm going to show you guys. So they're both posted on dllfiles.com. I've made many videos before downloading DLL files from this site. So if you watch this channel a lot, you know I like going to these guys for the DLL files. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the MSVCP140. You want to select the correct version, again, 32 or 64 bit. And usually you can tell the version number right here. So just go with the highest version number, which means it's the newest. So again, I'm running a 32-bit system, so I'm going to select the newest 32-bit download here, and I'm going to select the corresponding download button to actually download it to our computer. And it will take a moment to download, and once this one's done, we're going to download the other DLL also to our desktop, so just kind of giving you guys a preview of where we're heading with this. So we can see that one is finished, and now we're going to go ahead and do the other file. So I have another tab open here, the VC Runtime 140. This time it looks like the 64 bits of top version, and then it's 32. So you can tell they're not always in the same order here. But again, I'm going to select the 32-bit version. And versions will change, of course. When you're watching this video, it's likely not going to be the same version as you see in this video. If it's a slightly older version, I really wouldn't worry that much about it. It's not a huge deal, but usually I try and get the most recent version. And once both of these are downloaded, they're both compressed folders here. We're going to click the up arrow and show in folder. You can minimize or close out of your web browser at this time. And you can see we have both of these folders here. So I'm just going to drag both of them over to our desktop. And now I'm going to double click on the VC Runtime folder. I'm going to take the DLL file within here and just drag it over to my desktop. And you're going to do the same thing for the MSVCP140. So you can double click on that and then just hold down on your left mouse clicker and just drag it over your desktop. At this point you can delete the two compressed folders here as long as you have these two DLL files on our desktop now. Now that you have that, you want to go open up the Start menu type in File Explorer, best match to come back with File Explorer, just left click on that one time. You want to left click on the View tab over the top, and then on the far right side you want to left click on Options. Left click on the View tab, again within this Folders Options window, and underneath Hidden Files and Folders you want to select Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives, and then left click on Apply and OK. Once you're done with that, go ahead and left click on this PC on the left side, Double click on whatever drive says local disk and then has a little Windows icon above the hard drive. So go ahead and double click on that. Now you want to go double click on the Windows folder. Now if you are running a 32-bit version of the Windows operating system, you want to go locate the System32 folder right here. If you're on a 64-bit version of Windows, you want to select SysWow64, all in capital letters. There might be a System32 folder as well on 64-bit computers. However, you want to do it for the SysWow64 if you have that folder. So one way to tell if you have a 64 or 32-bit operating system 
If you don't see SysWow64, you're probably using a 32-bit operating system. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to double click on System32 here. Again, 64-bit operating systems, you're going to select SysWow64 instead. And you see we have our two DLL files on our desktop. I'm going to just drag over both of them and just drop them into the System32 folder. Move to System32. I'm going to say the destination has two files of the same names, maybe. It might say the destination has two files of the same names. It may or may not. But either way, we're going to replace the files in the destination. Check mark where it says do this for all current items. Select continue. So once you're done, just close out of here, restart your computer, and hopefully that should be about it. So as always, thank you guys for watching this brief tutorial. I do hope I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.